The police search for Nicola began within hours. She was considered high risk for reasons that became clear much later. Her family clung to hope. Obviously, my hope is that she's still out there. She's, something's happened and she's, I don't know, needed to take herself off for whatever reason. And we, we just want a home. We need, to, we need her home. Her children need a home. Nicola's friends launched their own appeal for information, urging witnesses to come forward. A week on, police revealed their thinking. It does remain our belief that Nicola sadly fell into the river and that this is a missing person inquiry. There was a lot of river to search, a tidal flow 12 miles to the sea in Morecambe Bay. But there were no clues there either. The family brought in an independent specialist. He too found no sign of Nicola in a stretch of river he searched. It is as though she has vanished into thin air, like, yeah, just it, in, just insane. By then, the investigation was attracting amateur sleuths. Some of them live-streamed their own theories on social media. To try to stop wild speculation, police revealed why they had graded Nicola high risk. As soon as she was reported missing, following the information that was provided to the police by her partner, Paul, and based on a number of specific vulnerabilities that we were made aware of, Nicola was graded as high risk. Later, police explained Nicola's vulnerability. They said she had significant struggles with alcohol brought on by the menopause. The revelation sparked widespread condemnation, even from 10 Downing Street. Well, I agree with the Home Secretary, and like her, I was concerned that that private information was put into the public domain, and I'm pleased that the police are looking at how that happened in the investigation. The police theory of what happened to Nicola may have been proved right, but it will be overshadowed by their revelations of her personal problems. Martin Brunt, Sky News.